Okay, welcome back. Uh, just to have a quick recap, uh, the first lessons we were looking at merging cells, uh, fill colors, changing the font sizes, uh, and looking at the basic formulas uh, using these symbols. We also looked at the equals sum, and in the last lesson, uh, we added charts. We looked at the absolute cell referencing, and we also looked at the formula functions uh, equals average, max, and min. Now today we are going to be uh, adding charts again, but we're going to be focusing on the if function. So we're going to have a look at the if function, uh, and also we're going to add some absolute cell referencing in today. As some of you mentioned, uh, you weren't absolutely clear on, on how that was working. Okay, so just to recap, if we have a look at uh, something similar to what we did in lesson two, uh, let's say for example, what we have here is we have our students and we have our averages. Now, let's say, for example, we want to show whether this was a pass in here or whether this one was a fail. OK, and we could go through individually one at a time. But to make things easier, I mean, we could have a thousand students. Uh, we're going to use the if function. So for that, we're going to type in equals if we open up our bracket and next we put in our logical test. So what we do is we say if this is greater than this, if this is greater than or equal to this, or even less than or less than or equal to. So for an example, let's say if the average is greater than or equal to 50. Okay, this is our logical test. We're going to say if the average is greater than or equal to 50, we add a comma there and we're now on to the next criteria. So value if true. So if H3 is greater than or equal to 50, what do we do? We want to show the words pass. So we type in there, pass. Okay. And then we put in a comma. And if you have a look, value if false lights up now, which means if it is not greater than or equal to 50, what should it show? And in there, what we can do is type in there, fail. OK, now what we're saying here is if H3, which is the average, is greater than or equal to 50, then it would be declared as a pass. If it is not greater than or equal to 50, then it would be considered a fail. So let's have a look. So it's, it's added the pass. And what we do is we're going to auto fill down and you can see it automatically works it out for us. OK, so now the way we're going to do it next is to look at using it with an absolute cell reference. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start at the beginning again. So we're going to relate it back to this pass mark here. So we're going to go equals if if the average H3 is greater than or equal to the pass mark, which is under K2, comma, we type in the same as before. If it is greater than K2, which is 50, then we consider them a pass. OK, press your comma, value if false lights up here. And if it is not, then it will be considered fail. OK, we hit enter. Now, when we try and auto fill down, it won't work. OK, if we have a look at the formulas, Okay, it's very important to understand this with the absolute cell reference. So we're having a look here. This is K2, which is where our 50 with the pass mark is. So the first formula is equals if H3, which is your average, is greater than K2. We want it to show pass. Now, if we auto fill down, can you see H4, which is correct? We want to take H4, but now it's moved down to K3. And further down to K4 to K5 to K6. We don't want that. We want K2 to remain in there. So what we're going to do is to use the absolute cell reference. And I'll show you how that works. So let's go back to where we were. Now, they're not all passes, so we're going to go back. Equals if, we're going to say equals if the average is greater than or equal to K2. But this time, we're going to use the dollar sign before the K and before the two. OK, so effectively it's freezing this cell in place. If H3 is greater than K2, value of true, OK, pass. 
comma, value if false, fail. Close your bracket. Now we should be able to enter this down. The benefit of this is if we change the pass mark to 53, if you watch these two, okay, they should change 53. Now these have changed to fails. And again, if we change the pass mark, made it slightly higher to 70, you can see straight away there's only one pass in there. Okay, or if we lower it even still to 35, it means the majority will pass. You can see how it changes. So it's always good to refer it back uh, to a cell like so. Now for today's activity, what I want you to do, uh, we will spread this over two lessons, is you're going to first create this spreadsheet uh, as identical as you can to this. Okay, keep the same colors as much as you can, uh, add the borders, the borders outside and the borders inside there. So you've got the thick borders on the outside and you've got the thin borders on the inside. So you're going to create this spreadsheet. You'll probably want to pause the video so you can complete the spreadsheet and then we're going to move on. Okay, so now I'm assuming that you've already got this on your spreadsheets and now we're going to look back at the if function. So again, what we have here is some test results uh, like we went through earlier. So the if function, let me zoom in just to make it clearer for you on this. Okay, so we're going to say equals if, if this score, which is C4, is greater than or equal to, again, F3, we're going to say pass, comma again, otherwise, if it's not a pass, it would be fail. Okay, now remember your absolute cell reference, the F3 needs to be locked in place, if you like, okay? Absolute cell reference, we're gonna put a dollar sign by the F, dollar sign by the three, and that will allow us to autofill the answers down like so. Okay, next it says display winner for the player with the greatest score. Okay, so for the winner, so it's either going to be player one or player two. So for this, what we're going to say is equals if we have to do our logical test. So if player one is greater than player 2 score, which is C12, this is our logical test. If the player 1 is greater than the player 2 score, comma, we want to show player 1 win. However, if it is not greater, then we do want to show player 2 win. Okay, so let's have a look at this again. So, if B12 if the player one score is greater than C12, which is the player two score, we want it to show player one win. However, if it is not greater than the player two score, we want to show player two win. Now let's hit enter and let's see how that works out. Okay, so you can see here, player two got a higher score than player one and it says player two win. If we were to change the results, if we were to change this to a five, you can see this changes here like so. Okay, oops. Okay, now once you've done this, what you're going to do for the final two is what I want you to do is to add the if functions for these and you're also going to add a chart for them as well. Okay, so before you submit your spreadsheet to me, you need to add your if functions here show near or far if they're equal to or above the maximum distance here. And then these are the two plants. We've got plant one and plant two, and we've got their growth over the six weeks. And in here, you need to write whether it's plant one taller or plant two taller. So you're gonna use the if function here and here. And once you've done that, you're going to add a chart for each of these, uh, just to go back into chart. So I'm going to just add the charts again to show you. So what we do is we take the name and the score, we highlight the information, we go to insert column chart. 
Now, for every chart you do, it has to have a suitable title. Test results. And you always have to have axis labels. So for axis labels, you add them here. And again, these titles, it's the score. And these are the names. Okay, let's bring this down a bit. And the next one we're going to look at, again, is a comparison. So we're going to highlight player one score, player two score on the games. We're going to insert a chart like so. And you can see it's slightly different. It will have the two colors. We have the legend here, the player one score in blue, the player two score in orange. Okay. Again, every chart must have a suitable title and your axis titles. Okay, again, let's bring this down. Okay, so just to confirm, I've done the first two for you. Okay. I've added the two charts. Now, what you need to do for the activity is you need to add the if function in these two, and you also need to add the similar charts along the side here, and then submit it to your Google Classroom. Any problems, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.